Hello, BookTube. Um, have a bit of a book haul for you today. Sunday. Beautiful, beautiful day. First day of my vacation. So I'm going to take a few days off. Um, I think it got up in the high 80s, low 90s today. Not typical weather for Vermont, but it does happen a couple times a summer. Rather early this year. But uh, went out with Steve and Frida Bean and my wife to uh, do a little bit of uh, shopping around the thrift stores to find some books. Um, this morning I went out with the family to um, just down the river where we go swimming and stuff and walk in the woods and all that. So it was, it was, it's been a nice day. And uh, we barbecued tonight. Hot dogs and hamburgers, nothing fancy, but uh, it's been a good day. But I did get some stuff, and I wanted to show you. Um, I got a couple of uh, DVD sets, uh, Claudio Monteverdi, uh, The Coronation um, de Papea, or Papeo, or if you want to say it. Listen to the first disc already, really enjoy it. This is um, Das Altwerk, which I, I like these recordings, and then this is... Uh, Nicholas Harnicourt, so and you you can't go wrong there. And the other one I got is uh, Rimsky Korsakov, Scheherazade, uh, Russian Easter Orchestra, and uh, Capriccio Espanol. So um, and this is a Philadelphia Orchestra, Eugene Ormandy. So and I listened all the way through. This one it was good. I get those things for like twenty five cents, and uh, yeah, I pick them up. Now getting to the books, it's a strange mix, but that's all right. The first one here is an old science fiction book club edition of The Annals of Witch World by Andre Norton. She's one of those writers I really enjoyed. Um, old, uh, old style, and uh, there it is. It's got three novels in it. So um, you have Witch World, Web of the Witch World, and Year of the Unicorn. This is... Um, so the original, the 63, 64, and 65 on publication dates. Um, they don't tell me when this uh, book club edition came out. So, yeah, I'm really happy to have this. Big Andre Norton fan. Um, so, not everybody is, but I like her. Then I got one of these Shambhala classics. This is the Shambhala, The Sacred Path of the Warrior by Trungpa. I think it's how you say his last name, Chogyam Trungpa. Um, if you can do better, wonderful. Um, I do know about this book, sort of a standard uh, work. This is uh, Shambhala Press, Boston and London, 2009. It's got a little catalog there inside of it with all their different publications. They are a good publisher. I've, I've picked up stuff of theirs before. Um, so, if you're into that, uh, it's a Buddhist text, and, uh, or a work of a Buddhist person, and, um, I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, heard much, much, much good things about it. Many good things about it. Then, uh, another series that I love, and I have quite a few of these, but I would like to have more. And these are these Penguin Lives. It's a hardback St. Therese of Liesel, and it's by Catherine Harrison. Um, there's our author. I believe, if I understand the story of, uh, uh, Therese, she died, I think, when she was pretty young, like in her 20s. And, uh, she, I think she had tuberculosis, but, um, she, she was a writer, and obviously a religious, a, a devoted religious person, and, uh, I'd like to read a little bit about her, her impact and all that. And these Penguin Lives are great for it. They might be succinct, but a lot of times they're really well written. So we'll, we'll see how this one is. Then a couple of Terry Brooks novels. Both of these, I believe, are science fiction book club, and most likely. Um, the first one is Genesis of Shannara, The Elves of Sintra. I read Sword to Shannara when it first came out. Um because we were all needed something after Tolkien, but um, this looks like it's a second book in the um, Genesis of Shannara books, which in the first one's Armageddon's Children, so I'll just keep an eye out for it, but didn't cost 
hardly a thing, so glad to have that. And then another Terry Brooks, which is not a Shannara book, is Armageddon's Children. Um, sort of a post-apocalyptic thing. And this one uh, says uh, from 2006. So we'll see how that works out. Take a chance. I mean, he's he's been writing for a long, long time, and uh, we'll we'll see. I have not read all the Shannara books. I don't I don't even know if I know all the Shannara books. Then there's an old volume that I have read. It was a big deal when I was younger, uh, my teens. I don't have a copy any longer that I know of. I could look over here. I pretty sure I do not. Where else would I look? I could look over here. Yeah, I don't. I, I think I have like a follow-up volume or something. This is Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Retelling of the Arthurian Tales. And uh, quite good. She was a bit problematic, but the book is good. So, uh, yeah. We will see. Another one, I, pro I saw this and I actually grabbed this for, for one of the people I work with. I have heard of it. It's Pachinko um, by Min Jin Lee. Um, I thought about reading it myself, but I have somebody at work who would really, I think, would really love this. It's about a Korean family that moves to Japan and all of that, and the hardships of being an immigrant family. Um, so I got this for her, and we'll see how she likes it. Then um, I've, I looked this fella up a little bit. I didn't know about him. Um, he he's been a reporter, a foreign correspondent, what we used to call it. They probably still do. This is a, a novel, though. This is The Warlord's Son, Dan uh, Vesperman. I think he's from Baltimore, that neck of the woods. Um, when did this come out? So he had a couple other things. He had Lie in the Dark and Small Boat of Great Sorrows, but I saw when I looked him up, there has quite a bit more since it. This is Alfred Knopf from New York, 2004, uh, first edition. Uh, I think that, yeah, there's our author, and um, it takes place in Afghanistan. I think there's like a, a Pakistani translator, and uh, I may have that wrong. Oh, I can just look. Pakistani translator and an, an older correspondent. Let me see. A burned out war correspondent hoping for last hurrah in Afghanistan. Skelly arrives at the Afghan border just as American bombs began falling on the ruling Taliban. Seeking the scoop of a lifetime as witness to the capture of the biggest fish of them all, he links up with an exiled warlord's chaotic expedition. Guiding Skelly's way is Najib, a tribal Pakistani with his own objective. Um, so, looks really good. I mean, I've never read this person. If anybody has, let me know. I'll make sure you can see his name. Um, a war novel. And a, a modern one at that. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it is. And then these last two are part of a series you would think that I had read before, right? It's sort of my sort of my gig, uh, maritime fiction. And um, I also love science fiction. I love fantasy and all sorts of stuff. But this is sort of a mashup, right? This is um, Taylor Anderson, and these are the Destroyer Men. And here's River of Bones. So these are later in the series. Um, this is beat about about a boom. This is from uh, 2018, so it's a couple years old. There's our author, and then the other one is Devil's Due. I found these things for almost nothing, and they're sort of a prod for me to get into this series. And I, I and I think I will. And this one is 2017, so just a year earlier. So I got both of them. Um, anybody's read the series, let me know. I do believe somebody mentioned them to me. A couple, maybe a few people have. I'm uh, probably wondering why I hadn't gotten around to them, but uh, I may have just dip into them late in the series here, just because I have them. So if you know anything about that, let me know. I do think we'll probably do. Uh, video with Steve Donahue tonight. Um, we got a few things more to do before he heads back to Hyde Cottage, him and Bean. We'll miss them both once they do. They've been great guests. They've been great fun. Um, and uh, yeah, good start to the summer. So get out and barbecue, have some fun, enjoy the sun, and thank you, BookTube.